Hello, everybody. Uh, uh, the, the title of the presentation is about uh, numerical weather prediction and WGP, as we say it in meteorology, and depth observation, data processing, and workload and uh, computation uh, workloads in the cloud. So probably you have, for those that have seen the the morning uh, keynote, probably we're going to talk again for European Weather Cloud uh, for uh, SMWF, where what we do, what is our mission, our IT infrastructure. And then we're going to talk about the um, European Weather Cloud and how we build it, the objectives and the technical parts that we have. I didn't have the opportunity this morning to discuss. And then uh, we're going to finish again with a uh, uh, conclusion and uh, next steps. So uh, first of all, as uh, ACMWF stands for European uh, Center for Medium Range Weather Forecast, we are an intergovernmental organization established in 1975. We, the bay, the initially, the headquarters were in, um, in uh, uh, Reading uh, in the UK, and now we are spreading all over Europe with uh, our data center being moved to uh, Bologna, Italy, and um, our uh, offices also, we have offices in Bonn. Uh, we are a numerical uh, um, operational numerical uh, uh, weather prediction center and uh, research institute that we work 24-7. So uh, every day we run our model, uh, IFS, Integrated uh, Forecasting System, uh, and we uh, disseminate that uh, globally to uh, many organizations uh, on all, all our member states. Probably you have seen my, our products, and uh, you have used our products in your daily life for when you're checking the weather. Probably the, 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 the apps they're using our um, model, or they have a local model based on our model. But essentially, it's, uh, what we do is not only for, uh, uh, for my knowledge, but it also touches all the citizens uh, globally. So we um, uh, uh, assimilate about uh, 80 million observations per day, and then we feed that to our model, and we uh, run the, uh, the forecast for the next uh, days. Uh, the, we have a big ar archive of uh, data and observation. O everything that we gather, we store them and we keep them for years. So that uh, gives us uh, about uh, uh, 250 or th uh, actually 300 uh, petabytes with a uh, uh, daily increase about uh, uh, 250 uh, terabytes, which is uh, not all the production uh, or daily production, but is part of it. So for, we have uh, an HPC facility, which is uh, one of the biggest in the world. Every five years, we have a new HPC. Now we're in the process of uh, uh, getting a, a, a leasing a new HPC based on Atos, and this is the next slide. And uh, we also have a cloud infrastructure that we contribute for the um, uh, climate, um, uh, Copernicus climate uh, um, change uh, service, uh, C3S, uh, Copernicus atmospheric monitoring service, and uh, Wikio, which is one of the uh, Platforms, cloud platforms that uh, give access to Copernicus uh, services and Copernicus data coming uh, directly from the satellites. And uh, as I said before, we have a big uh, database of uh, uh, daily observation and output of our uh, model. So this is more or less uh, our uh, HPC. This is the current state on the left hand side and then uh, what is being developed, uh, deployed in Bologna. By the end of this year, it's going to be operational. Uh, it's going to be five, uh, uh, ti almost uh, five, four times uh, faster than the existing one. And uh, probably we're going to uh, be uh, again in the top uh, 10 HPC centers in the world. Uh, so again, so we have HPC, our users, we have a user base of about uh, uh, thousands of users uh, in the member states, uh, research institutes from our member states. But we want to make it uh, uh, more uh, easier for them to access our data and process their data closer to their physical location. That's why we came up with the idea of a, a cloud, um, European Weather Cloud, together with uh, our um, uh, UMATSAT, another organiza European organization that uh, exploits the uh, data coming from meteorological satellites. And this is the, the vision of this uh, cloud, uh, of this community cloud. So we started uh, in 2019 with the uh, UMATSAT. We built the cloud. We have also to uh, have all the, uh, the governance of this, uh, the technical policies, how the users are going to access the cloud, because it's, we are not public uh, cloud service providers. We're a community cloud, and we do our best to provide the best uh, service to our uh, uh, member states. So all this uh, happened in 2019. We are expecting to the operational phase uh, uh, to be uh, uh, by the end of this year, with the uh, new uh, uh, infrastructure being developed in uh, 
Bologna in our new and big uh, data center. But for, uh, in order to arrive to this uh, 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 condition, to this uh, state, we, we started uh, and we built ourselves. We, uh, we used OpenStack uh, uh, and uh, Ceph uh, for storage and uh, cloud. And we build it together, and we have uh, also a, 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 a platform that we serve to our member states. But uh, some uh, uh, use cases that are very interesting and that we're going to talk later. So this is more or less the, the production line of, uh, of our, um, uh, in general, of, uh, uh, of uh, ECMWF with uh, data acquisition, with uh, pre-processing, and then we run the, uh, the model. There are some steps that are missing here, but uh, in general, the block diagram it depicts the uh, the, um, how the production workflows works in uh, uh, at SMWF. So at the end, when we have the products uh, uh, ready, these are archived and all disseminated to the end users, through either through intern or through uh, um, uh, list lines. So we have also a, a, a meteorological uh, data network, uh, RMDCN, and. Uh, the same data can be also uh, accessed from uh, the, um, the European Weather Cloud with direct connection to our archive system and to HPC. And, uh, uh, or, and the users can either use this uh, data, uh, post-processing this data in the European the Cloud and then provide a tiny version of the, or the visualization of, the, of this data to, through the front, front, front end in the cl uh, public cloud service providers. So this is the outline in general. So we have uh, the Ceph cluster that is uh, mainly from all the uh, basic components. We have a load balancer that we have uh, direct access to S3 buckets. And the same thing, uh, and this can be accessed with uh, this uh, URL, storage.cnwf, European Water Cloud. And then we have also the same connection on the left-hand side is human chat, which is uh, actually prov we, where, um, provides more or less the same uh, capabilities, uh, the, same, uh, uh, um, the same infrastructure for accessing uh, data coming from the satellites. So ECMWF provides uh, NWP data and uh, UMATSAT uh, satellite data. So our users can have uh, um, uh, virtual resources on both clouds and they can do whatever they like uh, uh, with uh, regarding processing, either federating or moving data from one pre-processing pre them on the one side of the cloud and the and uh, processing them in the other side of the cloud. All the uh, blue um, uh, shaded uh, part of uh, on the uh, right hand side are the internal system with uh, the dissemination system with uh, our um, HP system with uh, fields uh, database. RFS, IFS is the uh, project, is the, is the system, is the uh, integrated forecast system and all these uh, things uh, can be accessed from, uh, from the cloud. So, Besides that, we try to uh, uh, expand to our member states. So if a member state uh, would like to uh, um, federate with uh, this uh, cloud, European with the cloud, we have uh, the, the setup that can be expanded to them without uh, a lot of effort. But if uh, someone uh, logs in through the one of the cloud that uh, resides either on uh, human side or is in WF, they can uh, create uh, virtual resources in any uh, side of the uh, available infrastructure. In that case, we have uh, one uh, we have a use case with uh, Met Norway that we integrated their cloud, and uh, people from uh, human side, either from uh, SMWF, can, can create uh, virtual resources there. But this uh, needs to be further um, exploited, and uh, we are anticipating the future we might expand it uh, further. So now. All right, thank you. Hi. Hello, everyone. My name is Harry. I'm an OpenStack engineer at TCMWF. So in the next couple of minutes, I will try to very briefly uh, explain the OpenStack journey at TCMWF. So as my colleague already mentioned, uh, one of the big issues is uh, size. If you have a, an OpenStack VM, in meteorology, a terabyte of data is very small, right? So if you have to do that once or twice or three times a day and download data, that's a, that's a big problem if you're far away. So as my colleague said, uh, the, the main, the big issue was bringing the computation close to the data in order to benefit from the speed of, uh, of the local network. So our journey started in 2019. The first deployment was done on OpenStack Rocky. Uh, we are triple O guys, but there are other installers. We just chose to use this tool. So the Ceph cluster will be covered in more detail uh, by my colleague later on. 
but it is done externally to the, to the OpenStack deployment, and uh, it is managed with Mass and Puppet for its lifecycle. And for the, op for the, the original version, it looked like this. Uh, we just have deployed uh, a standard physical undercloud, and with that undercloud, we just deployed uh, a Rocky version uh, of OpenStack, and that, that version was enough for in the beginning. But as the project moved on, we had to expand and add other systems and add other more usab usability and so on. So after a couple of months, the problem of updates uh, came up. And we were also at a, in a very difficult situation because it was also the movement from CentOS 7 to CentOS 8 and to Python 3 and so on. So the following uh, diagram explains our journey. We decided to skip a few of the upgrades and we deployed uh, a second uh, OpenStack uh, over cloud based on Usuri. So that means there is a difference between those versions. And you can also see that we had, now this time, we had virtualized uh, underclouds, for, mostly for snapshots. Uh, but then the, we created the second infrastructure, and we were able to migrate from the Rock infrastructure the users to the, to the, to the Usuri infrastructure almost seam seamlessly, because those two infrastructures share the same Ceph backend. So it was reason reasonably simple to just ask the users to have uh, a couple of minutes of downtime, and it will make it work for you. Uh, and th this uh, journey has continued. This is, I think, 2020 to 2021. And we maintained those infrastructures uh, for a while, but then slowly, slowly phasing the Rock infrastructure away and moving everybody to Usuri. Uh, and this is, I think, the, the infrastructure as it looks today. Uh, as you can see, we, ha we have only the Usuri infrastructure, the CMWF. We have a number of virtual machines that support that infrastructure in regards to monitoring, in regards to testing, in regards to licensing for the GPU software and so on. And there is also the, the, the federation layer is visible. We use another system for the federation, as my colleague already mentioned, with Met Norway, for example, or, or, or UMETSAT. Here on the slide, you can see uh, the size of our current infrastructure, but it is, ex it is expected to grow. But overall, we're very satisfied with the performance of the system. Uh, for Ceph, Vasily. Yeah, um, yeah Ceph cluster, was, uh, we started uh, the first installment um, in 2019. Since then, uh, we used the latest version of uh, Ceph at that time, and uh, then we upgraded to, to, to the latest version of uh, Nautilus. Uh, because moving to Octopus and uh, later we have to uh, containerize the thing and we have to change also uh, the operating uh, system. We haven't done that. We wanted to do, to do it, but uh, for uh, various other reasons we haven't done it. So we, uh, it's very simple um, um, configuration. So we have uh, 23 uh, Dell systems. Uh, we have uh, two uh, uh, all the all the. Uh, the uh, operating system is uh, with RAID 1. All the other systems were uh, either HD or um, SSD with uh, 1.8 terabyte uh, storage. And uh, we followed the two uh, bonded inter uh, interfaces of uh, 20 to 25 gig of um, uh, uh, gigabit uh, per second uh, interconnection. So we have uh, probably the numbers that you see there with uh, monitors, 23 monitors uh, and uh, radio gateways. We, that was an experiment. We wanted to see if we can have uh, lots of monitors without affecting the performance. So far, so good. Three years later, we haven't had any uh, serious issue, and we have uh, workloads that they are very demanding. We have also uh, uh, some uh, that have a lot of I.O., uh, especially the meteorological uh, databases that they are uh, keeping a lot of uh, uh, data and uh, fields, uh, which is actually uh, very good, and we uh, keep it uh, as it is. So we uh, kept it in uh, Nautilus, but uh, when we move to the new uh, operating uh, model in Bologna, we're going to have the latest uh, and greatest uh, version of Ceph. So, and um, uh, we haven't had any uh, big issue with Ceph, and uh, that's it. If, uh, honestly, something that I wanted to mention, because we mentioned about uh, mass, mm -hmm. if I had done it uh, again, probably I would have done it with Ironic instead of a uh, mass, which is, for me, it was more or less uh, straightforward. Thank you. And now, now I, uh, back to the GPU issues. Uh, a lot, many, 
it has become obvious to UCMWF that a lot of workloads are transitioning to ML and uh, GPUs have really become a bit of an issue. And so we have a number of GPUs now available in our infrastructure. We have opted for the vGPU setup instead of the PCI pass-through. Uh, in that case, we believe uh, that a better utilization of resources is achieved. Uh, we have uh, three different profiles for the users to use, uh, but, and we will continue to expand and support. We work with uh, NVIDIA vGPUs uh, for that. And there are also a number of other auxiliary systems supporting the infrastructure. The first one is uh, the Disk Image Builder component. We provide somewhat custom images of, uh, of all the mainline operating systems. Usually they have a little bit of extra binaries that are specific to ECMWF. And this is done only in, to, in order to support uh, a more easy transition for, for the user. They just have some of the binaries already in, their, in the VM when that VM is spawned, no matter where it's spawned, if it's in CMWF or Humans or Merd Norway or other, fed, other, other federating partners. So right now we support uh, those operating systems. And there are also other monitoring systems, for example. We have some Prometheus exporters which show uh, a lot of information uh, we, we, main, we, we obtain data both from the Linux kernel, from OpenStack, and we also have some usage data that we monitor. We support 35 member states, and each member state has different requirements, so we have to, to, do, to do our best to support them in a, perhaps in a different way. And of course, each member state might have, somebody might have 100 VMs, somebody might have 10 VMs, so we, we monitor that as well. And we also monitor the infrastructure. Uh, in other systems. There are operators because we integrate with the HPC and the data handling system, so we have to also export that information to those users. Uh, so this is an example of the Grafana dashboards that, uh, that, we see, that we see every day. There are more than that, but as I said, we, may, we, uh, we get a lot of information from, uh, from all our systems, both from Ceph and so on. That's uh, something that is more import uh, very important for us because uh, as um, we have member states, the, uh, our budget comes from our member states. So when we distribute the uh, resources to our member states are based on their contribution to our budget. So the accounting is important. So this is, we monitor whatever they do on the, on the cloud, the consumption of the resources, and because we have to report on them uh, every year and say this is uh, what you consumed and this is what we do with the HPC and uh, what we're going to be doing also uh, for the uh, cloud. So user space, 35 member states. We have uh, actually a, um, a cross uh, discipline reference and with machine learning and artificial intelligence. But machine learning is also a lot of uh, um, footprint nowadays in uh, meteorology. We are trying to, uh, people, no, uh, some colleagues, not, not personal me, but uh, uh, some colleagues that are trying to take some parts of the IFS and uh, uh, run it on uh, machine learning, uh, uh, using machine learning, so that they improve the time of, of the, uh, um, of the uh, model to complete. And uh, because some uh, uh, natural, uh, some processes are based, can, cannot be uh, um, perfectly mapped with uh, um, physical process, cannot be uh, really mapped with, uh, with the algorithm, so machine learning uh, helps a lot. And um, there are some other domains that we have uh, actually reached out. We have uh, also training cases. We are, are participating as uh, ECMWF to many projects uh, relating to uh, cloud uh, computing and uh, edge computing as well, because we are interested about data coming from IoT devices. And uh, about research, we are, what we do at uh, European Weather Cloud is we're providing uh, the resources, so the, not only the images, but we're trying to inject uh, software that can be used from our uh, member states, like uh, we have uh, uh, open source uh, tools uh, uh, developed by ECMWF, which are available through, uh, in these uh, images. And th the other thing is that uh, they are very close to their data. So with an, a with an API code, they can uh, have access to a petabyte of, uh, petabytes of uh, data. Not in real time, let's be uh, realistic, but uh, they can get it Let's say if someone asks for the temperature of, uh, on uh, two meters uh, above the ground for the last uh, decade from a specific uh, uh, place, they're going to get it in uh, relatively um, uh, very fast from our database because we have to go through all the uh, data sets. 
This is more or less what we uh, provide, and uh, the interesting part is the use cases that we have, and they are from training, from uh, data, from machine learning, operational system support, and uh, also uh, so and uh, data processing. So training we nowadays in at ECM again during COVID it was excellent because we had to find a, a training a platform so we did it uh, on uh, European Water Cloud. The funny thing that also the European Water Cloud the, the whole infrastructure we did it uh, through uh, COVID uh, most of it and the upgrades were also uh, remote by uh, saying okay we have this uh, system installed it there and then we're gonna uh, do our stuff remotely. We have also uh, DWD from um, uh, the uh, German service that they have a, a very interesting uh, lab for the ICON model, which is a, a local model uh, of, uh, uh, for Germany and other places. Metro France with a cloud cover, uh, which runs both at ACMW and Humansat. We have also uh, some other applications from the north, uh, uh, south, uh, east uh, Mediterranean, where uh, for hazards that uh, they predict if there's any flood or something else. And many other things from uh, DWD, DWD and Mentor France are very supporting for, for the um, uh, European Water Cloud. And soon we're going to have also some um, um, uh, observation uh, relay running on uh, um, European Water Cloud from uh, uh, WMO, World Meteorological Organization. And also we run the uh, some of uh, weather code that, uh, where developers test their code with our data in our uh, infrastructure. This is more or less, there are many other interesting applications, but there are some highlights. But the important is that uh, it's not the size of the cloud, it's not this, but the, the importance for the, uh, for the member states and the application that they develop and make available to either to other uh, parts of the organization or to, to the end user or to uh, um, uh, European uh, citizen. So there are cases that we run uh, uh, like uh, and the, the, the hazards, so if there's any flood uh, coming up, there are, they have to uh, mobilize the um, uh, civil uh, agencies in the areas. So this is what we do, and, and uh, by doing that, they're saving lives. This is really important. I just wanted to underline this as well. We're monitoring floods, we're monitoring storms, we're monitoring particles around Europe. So it, it can be really, really important for somebody that he has this data when he needs to. Yeah. So either in sometimes the, the, the value, you realize the value when you see where we contribute with uh, all this uh, uh, infrastructure and, uh, and uh, to the end users, like planes that don't fly if uh, they don't have the, uh, the model, if they don't have the forecast, and, uh, and uh, see if they don't say something like that. So this is the, the vision of the European Weather Cloud, what we it's it, the, the meteorological community is very mature, so we are actually we are all of us. We know each other. Member states know ECMWF and uh, vice versa, and that's why we're trying to make this community cloud even further and with uh, adding more uh, members. So and um, the the idea is that we we have the infra infrastructure as a service and we are moving towards a platform as a service and uh, a software as a service so that we add more uh, and make uh, uh, more service available to the end user. So off the self picking things and then uh, creating them with a building blocks, they can create their own application or running their own models. And uh, the other things that we try to contribute also to other initiatives, uh, one is the destination earth. Uh, it's one of the flagships of uh, European Commission for the coming 10 years where ECMWF, UMETSAT and the uh, European Space Agency, we work together that we create the digital uh, twins of the, of the Earth for uh, extreme weather forecasting, but also for the climate change. So t initially we're going to deploy by the end of the 2020, mid, sorry, 2024, mid-2024, we're going to deploy the two initial uh, digital twins that uh, they're going to uh, provide all the information needed uh, for uh, extreme weather forecasting, for floods, for uh, any other uh, uh, things that uh, uh, needs um, action from uh, the stakeholders. And uh, European Open Science Cloud, we also uh, try to contribute and GIX and data spaces and uh, by also contributing to, uh, to EU funded projects. We have a number of uh, uh, EU funded projects that we are working on uh, cloud computing, uh, edge computing, because uh, we are very interesting 
our, very, uh, our key um, interest is uh, to inject uh, IoT uh, measurements in our model. So coming from uh, IoT devices to directly to our model. So that's it, more or less our presentation. So if you want to ask something and if we can answer the question, we're happy to do it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have a question, yeah. maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a question. Uh, thanks a lot for the talk. This was very interesting. I have two questions, actually. The first one is about the amount of data that you store. You said like it's 250 terabytes a day. That's a roughly 100 sure. petabytes a year. But how much of this data do you store permanently, or you basically use this in order to do to feed your models and make some predictions, and then you delete the data? So how much do you store permanently? The 250, pe uh, 250 uh, terabytes are permanently. Whatever we uh, produce and whatever we get, we always, uh, after filtering uh, again, we store it in our database. We store it in the archive, by the way. Uh, in the archive, yes. Yeah, I say the database, but I mean archive, yeah. OK, so you store, you store roughly 100 petabytes a year, is that it? Yeah. OK, interesting. So we, it's, it's one of the biggest ones in, in Europe, and I think uh, worldwide. And uh, right. yeah, we are, this is the jewel of our um, organization. Right. Now this is because it's very close to what we store at CERN um, for the, for the uh, experiments as well. It's roughly at the same ballpark. Yeah. This is what it's asking. The quest second question I had is about the um, migration that you mentioned from Rocky to Usuri. That was a little bit fast for me. Like, how, how do we actually manage? Because you said like a couple of minutes downtime for the users, and you move from Rocky to Usuri. Okay. Can you expand a little bit on this? Yes. So there was a little bit of voodooing behind the scenes. I will be very honest. So uh, there are two types of users. Either they can migrate on their own, and I don't have to do anything. I just tell them delete your VM and put it over here. So that's the easy part. Best users. Yes, that's a good user. Uh, the the worst user is the one that has let's say one VM, and that VM has two volumes. Simple, simple example, let's say 40 gigabytes per volume. Rough numbers, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. But he wants that VM running, or he wants a min very minimal downtime. So the two infrastructures, uh, they are both Ceph. Uh, the, the back end is Ceph in all of them. And Ceph is external, right? So N Nova sees that back end. They, they both see the same back end pools. OK? So what we, what, I, what we did is shut down the VM, create a clone for, for uh, in, in, in Ceph, and then that new clone with a new UI, with a new UID, and then I would instruct Cinder to see this new, this new block, this new block device, and now this, the, the clone now suddenly has appeared in the in the new infrastructure, and with a, with the volume already present, I can I, okay, the IP is not a big problem, so that I don't think can happen for hundreds and thousands of VMs probably, but for the number of VMs that were really critical at that time, uh, because as I said, there are the good users, so many of them I could, I, 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 I could slow, we could slowly slowly make the migration to the to the new system. How many users or VMs are we talking about in your case? It was uh, I, I can I can say, but yeah, there were not that uh, many to be honest. So. And uh, Rocky and Usuri, actually, what uh, Harry said is they are pointing to the same uh, SF uh, pools, so that was easy to migrate. We did it on purpose because we knew that we have to migrate a uh, few um, uh, VMs and uh, not asking uh, users to recreate the VMs on a new cluster. But they were not one or two. They were, they were like, I don't know, maybe 100, maybe, uh, for the critical ones, and the non-critical ones are where simply. Cool, thank you. Just uh, because you mentioned uh, CERN, you are from CERN, you know that uh, part of our um, database, the, the data handling system came from a donation from uh, CERN, <laughs> probably. <on>. Yeah. <laughs> we took uh, some robotic uh, systems from CERN and we moved it to Bologna. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thank Anything else? Nope. We have another question, maybe? Yes, hello, thank you for your talk. Uh, I, I saw that uh, in your self cluster you are using uh, uh, hard drives and also SSD. Yes. Uh, are you using uh, cache tiering or uh, separate pools for different workloads? Actually, uh, everything was a test, so we haven't uh, done a lot of uh, configuration regarding uh, SSDs, if, you, if you, this is what you are asking. But um, it was a, a plain vanilla configuration, I would say. So uh, all the different disks are together in the same pool? 
sorry, uh, 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 sorry. All the uh, different disks are together in the same pool, both SSD and hard drives. Or uh, yeah, wh wh when you when you create a pool, actually, you can say that uh, you you want to be either SSD or um, SDD. So there are some uh, separations. Yeah, that that was done. Yeah, okay. And we have configured also CRAS to uh, allocate uh, differently the the pools. Okay, thank you. I see no more questions. And that's it. Perfect on time. Perfect on time. Thank you all for your time. Thank you very much.